6.38. All right? And I'm sure if you've ever been to a church and there's ever been an offering, you hear these words. It says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Shall men, men, give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, all right, or you dish out, without it shall be measured to you again. Okay? That's King James uh, language. So, the key word you are looking for in this verse is men. God is going to bless you through men. All right? And so, it's not one through a man. Give and shall a man give into your bosom. Give and it shall be given to you. Not give and shall be, shall a man give into your bosom. Shall men, plural. So there are some people who are in the realm of the spirit marked out to be a reason for blessing your life. Amen and amen. Are you realizing that? Now, Luke 19 verse 44. Luke 19 and verse 44. Um, Let's read from verse 33 perhaps. It says that as they were losing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why lose ye the colt? All right. 43, please. 43, not 33. All right. He says, for the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee around or surround you and keep you in on every side. Now, this keeping in on every side is where you are kept financially in on every side. Are you listening to me? Yes, where you are kept in on every side every side okay where you cannot see uh, your way forward you know you are kept in you are hemmed in you are restricted financially how many have been restricted financially before like you came to church they were giving you wanted to give and you didn't have you, 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 you wanted to buy a car but you couldn't buy a car you wanted to get on a bus, but you didn't have money to pay for the bus. You saw plantain being roasted and you wanted to buy some and your money wasn't enough. And you said, let me just get home. And I ate it. How many have been kept in? You got home and there was no food. So the Bible says that the days come upon thee when they shall, your enemies will cast a trench around you and compass thee round, which is surround you and keep you in on every side, in every area. You know? So, verse 44. Joel on stage, please, Joel. Verse 44. And they shall lay thee with the ground, and thy children within thee. Amen. Amen. And they shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave thee one stone upon another. Why? Why all these problems? Because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. Because you don't know when you are being visited by God. When God's power is working and God's power is moving, you don't know. What's going on? So when God is visiting you, you must recognize it. But somehow, when people get visited by God, they don't even realize, oh, who who is this? What is this? Till it's gone. All right? And so, many people don't know what they have, often till they lose it. Okay? Everyone who dies becomes great in the eyes of men. Oh, he was a great man. Oh, he was a great man. Oh, he did this. He did this. But you do not only have to recognize when it's too late. When it's too late. 
Okay? You must recognize when God comes in a disguise. Mark 16 verse 12. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them. Underline another form. Or underline appeared in another form. He appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. So you must be able to recognize when someone, a God visits you in another form. If the man whom God is visiting you with is a very young person, you must still be able to recognize him in the young person. If it is in a young girl, you must be able to recognize it. If it is even in, through an unbeliever, you must be able to recognize it. If it's a Rasta man, you must be able to recognize there's anointing there. Whatever kind of person that you may not have expected, if different color, you must be able to recognize when God appears to you in another form from the form you are used to. We are all used to something, but you have to be able to recognize the presence of God when it comes in another form form all right so the first thing you have learned today is number one that you must recognize your time of visitation write it down what i have learned write in your your notes what i have learned today number one i must recognize god when he i must recognize the time of my visitation that i'm actually being visited i'm being blessed i am being visited i am being blessed i am being visited and I am being blessed. Say, I am being visited. And I am being blessed. Amen. The second thing you've learned is that I must recognize God when he comes in another form. Amen. Now, the third thing that you've learned is never say, how can this man help us? How can this man help me? When God sends somebody into your life, never say, who, how is this man going to help me? I don't see how it's useful. No, 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 no. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, Saul was anointed. All right? And when Saul was anointed, in verse 25, the Bible says, then Samuel told the people, the man of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. He was anointed in this chapter from around, around verse 6 or so. He was anointed and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away and every man to his house. Now Saul was anointed. All right. Then in verse 26, okay. And Saul also, who was now anointed, went home to Gibeah. And there went him with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. Amen. Amen. God had touched their heart. But now notice, but the children of Belial said, how shall this man save us? Now, how can this man be a blessing to us? And the line, how shall this man save us? So this is something nobody must ever say. When God sends someone who's going to be a blessing to your life, never say, how can this man save us? If you are an usher and the head of the ashes is there, don't say to yourself, how can this man save us? He's nobody, he's not important. If you only say to yourself, you're going to relate well with important people, so-called important people, you make the biggest mistakes of your life. Because people that are going to be very important, are not, they don't start important. They don't start as important people. They start as nobodies. And then they become important. So if you only relate with important people, you are going to make a mistake of your life. Years ago, I joined an important board, Church Growth International Board. And when I joined, I was the youngest person to join at that time. And everybody there was... Much, more, much older than I am. They are all like, the people are like 80s and above. 60s now. I'm talking about now. So, when I joined, you know, I don't know what, what, what was in my mind, but I realized that all oh, these were all great people. 
So my mind was that they were always great people. But one day somebody was telling me a little about the history. And I found out that many of the people that were on the board of David Yongicho, who had the biggest church in the world, came on this board as young pastors with nothing. Yes. And they all grew up together. So the people that were I met as important, they, they, were, they did not used to be important. So when you say things like, how can this man save us? Who is this guy? Who is this person? I remember Pastor Prince Gunaratnam, he told, he told us, he said when he, he joined, he was sent to uh, pick Yongicho. But he didn't know him. You know, and uh, I think he asked him, who is your, where is your father or something? Because he was a young person. I, I don't remember the exact details of the story, but something like that. Who is your father? And so on. But he didn't have anything. But today, the biggest church in Malaysia, right, the biggest building, it's not even allowed to build buildings, church buildings in that country. Because it's officially not, it's, a, it's an officially non-Christian country. But you should see, if you see the picture, if you can get a picture of it, Calvary Convention Center in Kuala Lumpur, and put it on the screen. By the time this man finished his life and his ministry, this is what uh, he built. And before that, even when I went to church, he still had a big church, and they were not allowed to build, but they had bought so many buildings around the church, and they had a church in a place, which was still a large church. But by the time they finished, you get it, the unimportant person had become the most important person. If they get a picture, I'm sure they'll show you, of the Calvary Convention Center in Kuala Lumpur. So, unimportant people become important people. And now he's honored by the king of Malaysia. He, he's, he has a title of, you know, they, like how the queen will knight you. They are, they are, their version of that. Yes. He has, he has all that as well. So he, he doesn't even use it. He uses another title. All right? So I'm sure such awards will also come to Ghana. Amen. <laughs> so how shall this man save us? Don't talk about anybody like that. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, every time you sow a seed, give, it shall be given to you. Men... Men, <laughs> men, men will be used. And if men will be used and you are saying, how will this man save us? Then you are canceling important people in your life. You'll be surprised what your shepherd is capable of doing. You'll be surprised what your friend in the church is capable of doing. For me, every blessing in my life has come through somebody. Oh yes, has come through somebody. Somebody was sent to become a blessing to me. And through that person and through associating with the person, I'm blessed. So then we see number one is blessed people. When I say blessed people, there are some people who are particularly blessed. I mean, let us take uh, even financially, if you take, let's say, Bill Gates. or uh, Bill Gates is in Seattle, right? Or was in Seattle. Are you there? Oh yes, he was in Seattle. When you go to Seattle, so many people are millionaires. He is a billionaire and the other people around him are also billionaires. So to be a millionaire there is not a problem. But it's not so common to be a millionaire in Accra. Anybody who works there is likely to be a millionaire. Working in and around. You know, most millionaires in the world are in America. Most of the millionaires in the world are in America. Yeah. I'm sure that's why there are flights to America from everywhere. Yeah. So I remember preaching in a church in Seattle 
the pastor, the pastor, the person who was taking me around, showed me that's Bill Gates' house. Showed me across the river. I can't see it clearly, but somewhere there, that's where the house is. Then I met somebody else in the church. Said, "Oh, this person is a one of is a, is a millionaire, but he's like a junior millionaire. I don't know how many. Like, they are not senior. It's not. It's not a senior millionaire." Yeah. Yes. So I asked, "What did he do?" And he showed me on the phone something on the phone. One of these, uh, not an app. Aha! Uh-huh, yes, this is the church built by Pastor Gunnar Ratnam. Yes. Yeah. Look at it. Yeah. And this 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 land. One time I was flying to Australia and I stopped in Malaysia. I stopped in Kuala Lumpur. And he hosted me. He said I should. I, he wants me to whilst I'm waiting for my flight. It was a long time. So he said I should come. And then it, whatever they did, then they took me to this place. Put the building back. Yeah. It was grassland. He said that he wants me to pray there because, you know, they didn't want to give a permit. Yeah. So he wants me to pray for on the, on the land. I should just pray on the land before I go. Oh, yeah. So I've known people who are very important, but we're not important. So be careful when you are discounting somebody. Say, how shall this man save us? How shall this man save us? I don't know if I'm talking to the right people. Yeah. Maybe I should find another group who are interested in what I'm saying. Yes. I was telling you something before. Yeah. The millionaires, yes. I was telling you about this millionaire and I asked him, what, what, what did he do to become a millionaire? Then they showed me something on the phone. One, either one of these little designs or something, he made that one and that is why he's a millionaire. Yes. Yes? It was like something like a smiley or a, one of those things. Yes. And that is all. And he's a millionaire. So, one time I preached and they said a senior millionaire was very happy with my preaching. Yeah. So I said, why, why do you call him a senior millionaire? He said, oh, unless your millions like 600, 800 million and so it's not, I mean, if you are millionaire 20, 50 million, 80, it's not a, it's not a real this is just <laughs> so there are people who are blessing everybody around oh yeah they just become like it's like anointing the person is anointed and there's anointing there and around people start becoming blessed oh yes so I am encouraging everybody Recognize blessed people and stay nearby and don't break your association and say what Laban said. Genesis 30 verse 27. What did he say? Genesis 30. He said, I have learned by experience that God has blessed me for thy sake.